So welcome to the Marketing Drive for May 24th, 2016. I, uh, I had a podcast running for a little bit called The Startup Drive, and I was actually podcasting while I was driving since I spend a fair amount of time on the road getting from here to there. I live in Cambridge. My office is for Honey Potter in Waterloo and in Kitchener. And I also hop down to Toronto, so I figured why, you know, waste the time, as it were. Um, And why not talk about uh, startup marketing, which at the time was a bit of a focus, but in the last few years, one of the things we've been doing with Honeypot has been um, a lot of uh, business development, marketing strategy, taking that marketing strategy and, and bringing it to market. And taking a strategy and actually executing on it. And that's the thing I'm going to talk about a little bit today because, um, you know, I find one of the things I see a lot of in uh, both the startup world and really I would say the mid cap world, which is where we live from a client services point of view. So we'll work with companies that are developing their businesses and we get in a lot deeper than most marketing agencies would typically uh, get to. A lot of them stay very much on the periphery. You know, you manage a, manage this media buy, manage this campaign. Uh, we dig in and we help out a lot with um, a product market fit, uh, customer life cycle, uh, lifetime value. So that has a number of different names that people will throw around. Um, some people call it customer value optimization. Some people call it a conversion funnel. But really, it's developing the uh, the lead. Um, so building a relationship, developing the lead, giving value, making a sale, because that's why we are all in business. And sometimes I feel like, well, sometimes people are afraid to say those words, but that's a that's okay. Our worlds are driven by commerce. Uh, but with value and with a relationship, and that's really kind of the whole point. Um, so both through our own products at Market or Nose and the Nose Network, and in our uh, client services work, which I would say we split equally on a day-to-day basis, um, what we're trying to do uh, is develop a strategy and then execute reliably and quickly on those strategies. So there's there's two things that uh, I wanna talk about today. One is developing a marketing strategy, and I've talked about this in previous podcasts as well, is have a marketing playbook. Consider it a playbook rather than a Bible. Um, I think a lot of, a lot of people uh, in business will develop a marketing strategy uh, that looks a bit biblical. This is what I'm gonna do this quarter and this, you know, this year, and then are beholden to that strategy and oddly enough uh, as things change because change is a you know it's a part of 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 business uh week to week month to month quarter by quarter um you lose sight of that strategy because you're executing and then you're not executing in line with your with, with your big plan so part of the reason for advocating for a playbook is it's a more fluid, more flexible, able to change, able to adapt, and able to keep up with the changes that uh, occur on a on a on a base on a weekly basis. Uh, there's always shifting priorities, new products. Uh, I'm pretty sure that unless you're working in a fairly uh, static Fortune 500 business, and even there, things change rather rapidly, and then your marketing campaigns. Uh, kind of go left at Albuquerque and you lose sight of what the actual goal was in the beginning because you're doing something like trying to consume a media spend I'm trying to get more leads, but you don't have a funnel developed anymore. So you're getting leads in and I see this So many times is companies building leads with nothing happening on the on the tail end of that there's no conversation being built there's no um, there's no path uh, so again that's what I'm talking about today creating a marketing playbook which is composed of kind of a number of elements that are fairly straightforward and fairly simple right you want to acquire leads you want to build a relationship you want to communicate to those leads make them a simple offer of engagement, something of value to them, not to you. Um, again, all too often, 
uh, organizations, companies will go out and say, basically, buy my product, buy a ticket, join us at this event, um, you know, buy our software, subscribe now. But that's value for the company. That's not necessarily value for the person that's going to be shelling out the dough, whether it's a dollar or whether it's a thousand dollars or whether it's ten thousand dollars. It's really kind of irrelevant um, what those those elements are. So when you're building a lead relationship, you want to show them value. Give them things of high perceived value before you make an offer to purchase your widget or a ticket for your events. Um, and without that value, that customer is not going to be very jazzed about why they should be doing this. And then the next step of it is once that purchase has been made, so warming it with a light purchase, with a contest, with something that they can get their hands around that they see a value for the dollar that they get. And then finally, once they actually do make the purchase, is are you kind of maintaining that relationship? You know, a, a business transaction is a lot like a relationship in life. It, there's give and take. You have to be able to, um, you have to be able to ensure that that relationship continues to be fostered and nurtured. Um, and again, it's just churn and burn, churn and burn, more new leads, um, as opposed to looking at the customers that you've got, showing them value, and then uh, executing uh, in, a, in a strategic and in a tactical way. So again, just to circle back to what I was saying initially, have a playbook for your marketing. Don't be too formal about it. You don't necessarily need to be too formal about it, but what you do need to do is you do need to show that individual uh, that you're, sorry, I'm driving right now and there's a, a, one of our fine police officers behind me, so I am uh, I'm taping this on a GoPro just for the record and uh, I am totally hands-free and I'm looking straight at the road even though I'm looking occasionally at the camera, which is very close to me, so there he goes. Have a great day, sir. Um, so, just to get back to it, it's developing a marketing strategy and a playbook. The playbook that I'll talk about more at Marketer Knows and at Honeypot Marketing and at my own site at dandadelpa.com is a lot about different plays that, that lead you. It's a lot like a football team. And then what you want to do is you want to execute, but executing where you can write out the steps that that individual is going to take and what you're going to say at every step along the way. You can do it on a piece of paper. I like to use graph paper to start, and then I use lucid chart, it's called. Um, it's, a, it's a diagramming tool that, that works uh, in your web browser, so it's pretty handy and convenient for sharing. Um, and making sure that you don't have massive holes in your your customer journey and far too often there is no plan except for I want to sell it to this person right or sell a ticket to an event to this person okay that's fantastic why would they show up to the event what is the value to them how are you going to keep in contact with them and what are you going to say to them before during and after that event too often what, what we're doing with marketing dollars and marketing spend is um, is going for the final sale right off the top and that's extremely but just to talk about it from our perspective as business people and as marketers that is an extremely expensive way to acquire new customers um, to the final sale you're gonna have a high cost per click you're gonna have a high cost per lead and you're gonna have a low cost per acquisition because those people will not be fully qualified. What you wanna do, and what we wanna do, is we wanna have a consistent method for showing value to leads and then segment them into their interests and then make the appropriate offer at the right time for that person. It's really as simple as that. I mean, business hasn't changed in a long time from the fundamental ways. Although with the rise of technology and innovation, there's a whole lot of people doing things for the sake of doing them, making calls to action for the sake of making a call to action. If you're a corporate marketer sitting in a, in a mid-sized corporation, um, you're just trying to defend your position, uh, make things look good, and what comes out the other end of it is a very confusing and disjoint and honestly a low value offer for that consumer. So like it or leave it, um, you're, you're 
doing it wrong, and I, I mean that in the nicest possible way. Um, but that's when we lose sight of that marketing playbook. That's when we lose sight of what are our goals here? What are we actually trying to achieve? And how do we want to get people through the first conversation to the final conversation, which would be the purchase, and then keep them engaged, keep them um, interested. If you're just shunting leads into a funnel, letting them sit, and then making uh, general calls to action, like buy this, buy this ticket, then you're gonna you're gonna suffer from a lot of the um, I'll call them the malaise of the modern marketer, and uh, you know it's 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 all too frequent um, that you'll see uh, cost per acquisition where they're very quote unquote high. However, the interesting thing is is that marketers and, and business people are using extremely generic benchmarks, not their own benchmarks, not finding out what works for them to figure out what that cost per lead might be. So again, I don't want to get too far off topic and this is my first marketing drive. I'm going to try to do this every day. If I keep it simple and I keep it on point, I'll be able to do this every day and I think we'll build something uh, pretty cool uh, that you will hopefully find interesting. I'm also going to talk a lot about um, developing marketer knows because that's a that's a work in progress but we're getting very close to um, to a launch which is exciting I'm also going to be talking a lot about developing honeypot marketing the ups the downs the ins the outs the good clients the bad clients I like talking about bad clients um, probably this week I'm going to talk about firing clients to be honest with you um, I don't think that's a bad thing in an agency uh, you can have great clients and you can have toxic clients um, we've had them all over 15 years um, and I'm also going to be talk about, talking about building an agency and team building and I'm going to basically break it up into three distinct buckets. So for product development and us as a, a company developing and launching and rolling out a business which is, uh, I'll call it a, a, I call it people as a service but it's really a monthly subscription service to market or knows. Uh, which is a very exciting um, community that we're building out. Uh, the second one is going to be talking about agency life. Um, and I'm going to do that mainly, I think, through danadelco.com. And that's going to be kind of a, a stark, not a stark, uh, a, an honest look at um, agency life, building teams, personalities, clients, business models, building for growth and sustainability in a, in a very competitive world. Uh, and then the third thing I'm going to talk about are marketing tactics, I guess more from an agency perspective, um, directly related to honeypot marketing. So that'll be pay-per-click management, campaign management, uh, product management, um, business development, and then campaign executions that we do all of the time. That we're, If you know me, uh, we're a very busy agency, we're growing uh, rapidly, so there's a lot of changes that happen and change is good. So those are the three things we'll be talking about on the marketing drive, in addition to did to today's uh, little discussion about creating that marketing playbook, making it practical. I'll probably put this particular video up on Marketer Knows. Um, it'll definitely be on the podcast. And one of the things I do want to talk about are developing that playbook in a really specific tactical way understanding how to measure against your goals and then how to build out real campaigns that you execute that achieve those goals it's a simple process and it's far too often forgotten um, I'll also uh, poke some fun at uh, corporate life which uh, if you know me I'm not a corporate guy um, but I do enjoy working with my friends in the corporate world. It's always entertaining. Um, you, know, you know, have a good time with it. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe get some, uh, show you some value uh, from my real life uh, day to day. And this is just a shout out to my beautiful wife. Thank you for letting me borrow your cup. Today, I am a lash boss. Uh, my wife is a spectacular human being. Uh, she's got a thriving business as well um, and she's taking a lot of the things we talk a lot about about business and 
and obviously life. But we talk a lot about her developing her business uh, uh, called Unique. Um, she is a green status presenter, I believe. And um, she's taking a lot of uh, stuff that, that we do, that I do, uh, and actually rolling with it and seeing the very real results. And, and you know, modest steps lead to great rewards. Uh, and you can see it happening. So probably be talking a lot about that too. Uh, she does a lot of Facebook Live. She's built a great community for her team. Um, and then uh, persona development and kind of engagement. But it's interesting to see and it's a lot of fun for me too. One, because I get to talk to stuff that I'm, talk about stuff that I'm passionate with about with my partner. But also to see her kind of go through the steps is, uh, is very gratifying and it's pretty exciting. So anyways, that's the marketing drive for today. So uh, you'll be able to grab um, a bit more information on the marketing playbook and some of our um, campaign execution uh, roadmaps, EPs we call them, execution plans and roadmaps, it's another word for them, same thing, um, over at Market or Knows. And I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, it's a beautiful day, by the way. Uh, May 24th, 21 degrees, it's, uh, what time is it, 9.16, take a little bit of the rush hour, um, so yeah, well, uh, you have a great day, and I'm gonna talk to you tomorrow, anyway, sorry, still driving, gotta keep that in mind.